Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. And um, my name is Ilana Kopperman. I'm calling in from Israel, and I work for Mobileye. And this talk will be about um, some work which we have been doing with the Linux Foundation for enabling the usage of Linux and safety applications. And um, just to set the context, um, I do not come from the safety assessment or safety standards community. I work as a system architect, so um, I have many years of experience in embedded Linux systems. Um, and what I do is to try to help to design solutions um, for the safety and security issues. What I'm going to speak about here is what I call bridging the gap because the project ELISA is all about trying to help to um, allow, enable the usage of Linux in safety applications, um, something which has been a major problem in the past, and to see how we can all work together to make that happen. So to go into more detail. Okay, um, a little bit of background. Again, I don't know who I'm speaking to, um, but deploying Linux and safety critical systems has been a major challenge to date. Um, for those who are experienced in using Linux, they um, obviously are familiar with the benefits. Um, Linux provides many um, features, subsystems which enable to to develop complex software. It has um, strong security capabilities. And one of the really important aspects of Linux is that it, it gives us the necessary software interfaces to virtually any underlying hardware with which we need to work with and an amazing community um, with which we can cooperate and work together to provide real solutions. So for those reasons, people in the, who develop safety critical app applications have been looking to Linux to use it in safety critical systems. The problem is though that um, Linux, in order to be used in safety critical systems, it has to pass very stringent assessment processes which are defined by safety standards of different types. I'm not gonna go into those details, but for those who are not familiar, but the process is a very strict and, and binding process, which basically gives the liability to the, the people who produce those software applications to ensure that um, they have done the most possible to prevent any harm to, to human life or any loss um, due to the usage of that software. And that's where things start getting tricky because Linux obviously hasn't grown and hasn't been developed in a way that matches the strict documentation, testing, and assessment requirements for the, of the safety standards. And, um, and that is where we have a major problem and where we are trying to, to bridge that gap and um, to bring the two sides together close enough so that we have we are able to actually deploy Linux in such systems. Okay, um, this graphic, and I think we should sort of keep it in the back of our minds. The work of ELISA, the group that you know we we established um, for enabling Linux and safety critical applications, is really all about minding the gap. When I, and it's 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 really tricky in this sense. We deal on the one hand with people who come from the world of safety assessment, which is, um, has very strict standards, very strict compliance rules, because at the end of the day, we're dealing with, with legal implications and, and uh, potential risks to, to lives for these type of applications. And on the other hand, we have the, the open-minded um, um, community consensus, which we see in the Linux development, and the two communities need to work together, and that's what we're trying to do in this group, to bring um, Linux down into the world of safety critical systems in a reliable and effective way. Mm 
Okay. Um, sorry. Too fast. Okay. Um, so when we started, and this is sort of like a, I don't know, could call it even maybe a startup mode, trying to figure out how can we do this. So there's a lot of pressure from industry, and that's where myself and, and other people are coming from. There's a lot of pressure to to use Linux in safety critical systems, and particularly where I come from, which is the automotive domain, but in many other areas as well. Linux is a strong choice um, for all the reasons which we mentioned before. Um, we had to get together in order to, to set up the foundation, which is what we have been trying to do now. And um, what happens, we are trying to define the necessary level of functional safety, which will basically give us the ability to manage the risk in our product development. Um, as I explained before, when we deploy an application uh, in a safety critical application, we have to be sure that we can evaluate and manage that risk and to ensure that um, we are well, we have the, that well mapped and we define relevant mitigations for any anticipated risk. And, but on the other hand, when we are using a Linux as the foundation, we have to really, really understand the implications of what Linux on the one hand is providing the power and the potential um, misuses or problems which can come up um, because of the, the, the different features, the configurations, the different um, um, ways in which we interface with drivers, hardware, and other elements of the Linux system. So we need to be able to really understand where we're coming from, what Linux can provide for us um, to enhance the, the, the safety of the system which we're trying to produce. And we also need industry collaboration because if we're dealing with theory, then um, we're not really getting anywhere. Okay, So we have to deal with practical, real-life examples um, which have um, a real business need, and to see how we can actually use um, Linux as the operating system in such systems. So um, a summary of what the ELISA mission statement is all about. Um, we want to define and maintain a common set of elements, processes, and tools that can be incorporated into specific Linux-based safety critical systems, which will eventually be amenable to safety certification. So if you see the mission statement here, um, the real goal is to define different um, software elements, different processes, tools, anything that will help us um, so that when we use those in an appropriate way in a, in a specific context, the resulting system will be more amenable to safety certification. I'll go into a little detail later what we are not trying to do. But just one point I want to make clear right now. We cannot provide, and no one can do that, a one-size-fits-all Linux kernel, which is perfectly secure for any application. Okay, anybody who is familiar with Linux will understand that that, that doesn't make sense even to try to go down that path. What we do want to provide is a, is a supportive infrastructure, technical supportive infrastructure, which will enable people who do want to develop Linux-based systems for safety critical applications, if they use those guidelines, those tools, actual um, kernel patches, whatever it may be, if they use them in the correct way, they will then be able to um, bring their product to be certified for, for use in a safety crit critical context. And we are working together with the Linux Foundation and with the, the different standards bodies to make sure that all of those elements, each on its own, bring us a bit closer to that goal. But obviously that still leaves the choice, the, the integration, the implementation, up to the individual user. And we cannot, no 
um, um, project or a working group can possibly provide a single Linux kernel, which will be certified for use in all any or all safety critical applications. Okay, so what are our goals? I mean, I think uh, more or less it's what I've been talking about before. We want to provide those basic building blocks. We want to be able to tie one of the things which we have been working on is what we call our reference process for safety assessment. Um, we found that for many reasons, um, to take Linux and to get that certified um, following um, the documents of the safety standards was was not possible for many reasons. A, because um, different safety critical applications have to abide by different um, standards, and B, because the language that's used there is not um, so well understood by people who come from the Linux background, and also because um, not all of those documents are accessible to everybody who comes from the Linux community. So the idea was to work together with the safety standards communities and to do that in two stages. That on the one hand, um, to define a reference process as an intermediary step, and then to have that reference process assessed and um, um, mapped onto one of the relevant safety standards so that the people who are working within Linux, when they want to define how they abide by the standards, they can work with that reference process and then leave it to the safety experts to map um, what they are using and how they are doing it onto the original standards themselves, um, which is a process which hopefully will enable um, everyone to focus on what they are best at doing. Um, what we also want to do is to help support business entities in order to, that they should be able to take the output of our projects, the different tools, guidelines, processes, whatever we define, and use them, package them, implement them, deploy them in their safety critical products. And this is all about communication, bridging the gap between all kinds of different communities, all together working so that at the end of the day, whatever we, our work products that we produce will be acceptable by all. Okay, how do we measure success? I mean, it's a bit early in the project, but these are the standards which we defined for ourselves. And as I said before, we're still a bit of a, um, startup mode, but we, we do have some preliminary results. So the first thing, what we want to do is to have actual tangible delivery the deliverables, okay? We want to focus on certain, we are doing that already, and I'll go into details soon into some of the work groups which are set up and working, but we want to define, identify which kernel features are most relevant for um, safety assessment, which tools we want to develop to be able to help us in that um, to that goal, and um, we want we are keeping track of work that's being done on different use cases, so that those will be established as um, examples for future work as well. Okay, what I mentioned before, defining that reference process, which is an ongoing project, we want that it should be usable, maintainable, um, easy to maintain. That if um, that uh, uh, a product that is developed um, and is proven to be safety critical, we can maintain that over its lifetime. It has to be accepted, and this is a very important point, by everybody involved because, I mean, we can say that we love Linux and that we appreciate its features and how it works, but we need that it should be accepted by the safety community as well. Okay, and... At the other end of the spectrum, we have to get the hardware support from the underlying hardware to make sure that whatever we define actually is feasible and can be implemented on any relevant platform. Okay, so there are, are many goals here which all work together. And as I said before, 
I don't think we'll end up with a complete, perfect, one-size-fits-all solution or anything near that, but we do want to help um, so that business entities can come much closer um, to that goal than is possible today. Okay, what are the limits? Okay, we, we, we certainly will not engineer your system for you to be safe, and we cannot ensure that you will do it properly, and we won't create a single out-of-tree um, Linux kernel that you just have to plug in for your safety-critical applications. And obviously, you have your own responsibilities, legal obligations, and liabilities to implement things appropriately. But we certainly want to provide a path forward and do that in the fun way that Linux works by collaboration. Okay, if there's any questions, I'm going to bring them up in the chat. I'm going to look out for that. Okay, now um, currently we have three work groups, um, with a fourth one um, which was just born last week. Um, and this is where um, I'm opening this to the public. If anybody wants to, they can contact me afterwards, see how they can get involved, see where they can contribute, see what they can gain from this collaboration. And that's what I'm really looking for here um, um, so that we can um, have more, uh, a, more uh, a more representative set of contributors so that we can actually work better and and, and get better results. Okay. Um, the, the work groups here are not listed in chronological order, but whatever. One work group which we have is called the Kernel Development Process Work Group. This work group was really started because one of, based on one of the bullets which I had, I, I think, on the second slide. Um, in the past, there was this... Um, concept of Linux as a non-secure, a non-safe, non, uh, with um, software product, which was developed by people who didn't follow any process, who couldn't make any clear statements about the quality or the, or the, or even the requirements, architecture, um, test coverage, anything like that. Nothing could be well document, documented and proven about Linux. So I think anybody who works with Linux realizes that um, there's a lot of power in Linux. There's a lot of power in the Linux development process. But it just works in a very different way than the pretty much waterfall type of, of execution flow that we see in, or that's expected by, from the safety standards. So basically what we are trying to do is to assess um, the kernel development process. This is, this is a process which took about six months and a lot of work was done here and together with the safety community to prove um, what actually I called, um, you know, the, the, the uh, bringing out the, the good in, in, in Linux, demonstrating that there are many aspects and We'll see in the next slide or whatever soon we'll see some examples. We analyze based on the common um, Linux stand, um, safety standards um, and our reference process. We divided the kernel development process into different categories and we're able to assess what is currently done to develop Linux, even if it works differently than how the, the safety assessors expected to demonstrate that it, 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 we do have that quality which is built in. We have the power of, of the peer review. We have a, the power of, the, of, of um, mailing lists, how people communicate together, how the release process, how things work um, in Linux development to demonstrate that there is actually method, uh, a strong methodology in the way um, Linux is developed. At the same time, however, obviously we found that there were some major gaps which were exposed, and we'll go into that soon. But one of the important things which we're working on now are trying to fill in those gaps so that we bring Linux closer to acceptance for usage in safety-critical applications, and we are working on different areas 
to fill in those gaps. Um, we have identified five areas which are currently in high focus, and with time we hope to, to cover more. The second group is, is the kernel development process is really dealing with the nuts and bolts of, of Linux as a software component, the different features. Um, the, um, another work group which we have is called the architecture process work group, which take things, takes things up on a higher level, and it looks at the architecture of um, Linux, again, as a software product, and it divides it up into what they call chunks, for lack of a better term. It's not really components, it's not features, it's in different areas. For example, memory management or, or schedule, those are two areas which are very focused for safety analysis. And um, what they're basically trying to do there is do this meta analysis of safety and to help um, people to understand um, how they can take those um, different areas and implement, um, let's say, for example, memory management in a specific use case um, in a specific, on a specific hardware platform based on features which exist already in Linux and features which may need to be added. Okay, so that's the focus of the architecture process work group, which basically takes similar to the work which we're doing in the kernel development process work group, but takes that up more on an architecture level. Where we take into account interactions with other software and hardware components um, within a, a specific use case. Um, the focus here was on various use cases, but because of the, the current um, set of contributors, I mean, we're, we're pretty much a lot of us are coming from the automotive domain, so that and we ended up splitting this into a separate automotive work group, which will focus on features and safety features and enhancements and what can be done specifically to meet the requirements for um, um, software products in the automotive domain. And that's, that's the new group, the automotive work group, which was just created last week. And um, that work group will do similar work, but focused primarily on the automotive domain. And we have representatives there from AGL, if people are familiar with that, um, and other um, um, major car manufacturers, et cetera, working together to try to define relevant solutions because there's a lot of pressure to be able to use Linux um, in automotive applications. And the third group, um, working group, which is actually was the first one, um, the third group, which is actually the first one, is the what the name has been changed to the medical devices work group, and I guess this is in the, the spirit of the times. It originally started off. Um, this was the first work group. It was really sort of as a as a brainstorming type of of um, first use case. Um, there was a system called the Open APS, Artificial Pancreas System, which is, was open source to use to monitor um, glucose for um, diabetics and whatever. But um, and I'll, I have some slides on that afterwards. Um, because of the pressure to produce, um, increase the production of ventilators due to the um, Corona crisis. Ongoing, so um, there's pressure to develop open source ventilator systems. But obviously, ventilators are very safe to critical systems, um, which are um, you know life threatening if if there's some malfunction which is not properly managed. So um, um, so it's expanded rather than focusing only on the Open API AS is also expanding into other areas of medical devices. Okay, there are two questions I'll answer. My contact information, um, I'll share it, I guess, at the end. I don't think it's on my slides, but I, I thought that's in the system for the conference, so Nelia maybe can help me with that, or I don't know, maybe I'll put it in the chat. 
And um, also, um, definitely, we are open to any use cases. These are currently the use cases. There's another question about industrial real-time use cases. Um, there is interest. We just don't have people who are, are, are there to, to pick it up and, and, to take it and to lead the effort. But definitely, those are of interest. They're important. And we need more contributors. Okay? So definitely, they are related, and the groups all should and will be working together with the same common goals, but each one focusing on obviously different safety standards and different specific um, risks and, and focal points. Okay, so going back to what I said about the kernel development process. Work group, um, I think I, I'll go quickly over this because I think I more or less gave the background um, in my speaking. Our work has been divided into two phases. First, we defined this working reference process. It took quite a while because, like I said, um, you know, about bridging the gap, we're, we're dealing with two very, very different kinds of communities, and um, at times uh, the communication can be a bit um, um, noisy, let's call it, but um, all in good spirits. And the point really is that we want to develop this reference process to make it easier to communicate, okay? Because people who are um, um, kernel developers or develop software or are software architects or whatever it may be or, or who develop drivers um, they are not really familiar with the bits and bytes of the safety standards. It's a little bit hard for them to, to deal with the legal terminology and the reference process was very helpful, to, again, to bridge that gap. I want to emphasize again that they're not in place of safety standards. It leaves the work of, of having that reference process um, assessed and accepted um, as a second stage, but that we've been working with the different standards communities to, to, to help ease that process as well. Okay, because it's done in, in a, in a method, method, methodical way, which, which helps for the communication on both sides. Okay. But as doing the, in doing the assessment, we found that there are certain gaps. And for each of those gaps, we can say, okay, well, for example, in the automotive domain from which I'm coming, um, those gaps are not relevant and we, we don't have to deal with them. Or we can provide mitigation, mitigations which are relevant um, and in, which are specific to the use case. And we um, and the other uh, the final option might be to um, to work within the community to promote change, to get support, um, to add features uh, which are relevant both um, in that particular specific use case and in the more general domain. And basically, what we're aiming for is really to promote Linux as a viable candidate for use in safety critical applications. Um, you can hear different points of view, and certainly when we started this work, the attitude was no way. Linux and safety critical applications are totally foreign to each other. There's no way that we can get that uh, Linux to be approved. But slowly, we are trying to bring the gap, bridge that gap, and bring the two sides closer to each other. Okay. Um, sorry about the bit of the delay. Whew. Wow, okay, I have color markings on this, and I see them on the bottom, but now I see they don't show up, so I'll tell you what's color-coded. Oh, don't see it. Interesting. Okay, anyway, um, this was the list of areas which we analyzed based on the reference process. And um, some of these areas, for example, change configuration management, that's well managed by, um, um, by the Linux development process, so there wasn't anything really major to discuss um, relating to gaps. Where we um, did have, um, where we did identify uh, more major gaps which we need to deal with are, and again, if you'll get a copy of this slide, you'll see they're color-coded in um, yellow, but okay, I'll just have to tell you where they are. Um, requirements definition. Um, Obviously, Linux kernel developers don't have any formal process for defining requirements. Um, st 
static analysis. There's some ongoing work, but it's not a requirement. We don't get full coverage. There isn't a single tool, but there's a lot of great ongoing work, which can be expanded. Kernel testing, similarly, there's um, Linux has come a long way, and there is a lot more available tools which can be used and which are being used and which are being enhanced all the time to ensure the quality of the, the code that's being developed but for obvious reasons. I mean, the, the, um, the, the maintainers have their own responsibilities for the quality of the code, and they want to be sure that um, there's no regressions when they, or, or minimize the risk of regression when they release code because of the volume of users and um, the volume of the different applications. And um, so there's a lot of work that's ongoing there. Um, the fourth area on which we're focused right now is the, the build process, how we configure, um, um, how we configure the, the kernel to be used in a safety critical application. What type of criteria do we use to, um, to decide which features will go in and which won't, and um, et cetera. Okay, we'll, we'll have the next slide. We'll go into some more detail. And the final area is the, how we introduce new features and patches, um, both as safety mechanisms to deal with safety issues, and in general, if we want to introduce new features, how we get them um, assessed approved and released to, to um, meet the functional clients which we might have in a particular use case and to do that in a way which is acceptable by the safety standards. So those are the five focal areas on which we are um, working right now in this group. Okay, so the first area was defining some kind of umbrella criteria similar to what we see in security, what we would call bug classes. So in a similar way to define um, what are the criteria for a safe uh, Linux release. Safe, it's written with double quotes because it's, it's not going to be really a safe Linux, but it's basically criteria for assess, assessing the safety level or um, the safety quality, let's call it, of, of our uh, kernel image, which we're using in a particular application. Okay, um, so for example, um, I gave a list here of, of, of different um, kernel configurations which we are currently assessing for use in safety application that focused on uh, memory protection. This is an ongoing work, so this is not a, a final list which is going to be deployed, but basically to try to assess each of these um, kernel configurations to understand to be able to define in terminology which is relevant for um, safety assessment what the expected value, uh, added value for any particular kernel configuration may be, and perhaps um, warnings, caveats, when it's less relevant, more relevant, for example, if there's a performance impact or if there are certain um, functional requirements which contra are contra, uh, contra, contrary to the use of any specific configuration. Okay, the last line we talk, um, is about freedom from interference, which is a, a common term used in the automotive safety domain. We want to ensure that if you have a software component, which we have tested and proven um, in a standalone way that it, it, it um, satisfies certain requirements, provides certain results, give certain level of quality. We want to be sure that we have, um, that it, it won't be impacted in any way, and I won't go into details of that, but that it won't be impacted by any other software or harder component which will interfere um, with how we expect it to work. Okay, and again, here are some examples. And again, each of these has to be assessed, and we have to provide guidelines when it's relevant and when these should be used and how they should be appropriately used. But we want to give this as a set of tools that if somebody wants to um, use these kernel configurations in a safe way, that they will be able to, to put them together. And some of the configurations are more relevant for testing 
or, or proving that um, there are no um, memory memory violations, etc., and and that and and those can be used as well um, in the safety context. Okay, these are these are again these areas are ongoing work. Static analysis, um, where we focus on on different areas of um, uh, also again based on the the first bullet about the criteria. Um, we've been focusing on on Cochinelle. There's some typos. I apologize in this version, which I corrected. But uh, when I post my final slides, I'll correct them. Cochinelle is misspelled here. Okay. But anyway, we've been analyzing different semantic patches, how they're how they can be used, and which and to define a suite uh, a set of semantic patches which are relevant um, for safety analysis in particular. And again, coverity, which is already aligned with various safety standards, what is already covered, what needs to be covered, and how we use that effectively um, to ensure the quality of, of the kernel, the Linux kernel. And then there's kernel profiling, a lot of ongoing work right now on eBPF and how, they can, and how it can be deployed to help with kernel profiling, um, and including the, the definition of the capability of the BPVS capability and perhaps alignment with how that um, can be um, um, can work together not only for security um, context but also for safety. Okay, so again, these are ongoing projects and again, people who are interested, who want to join, who want to contribute, this is, these are the kinds of things which we're working on. Long-term goals, these are the next steps. And long-term by us, it's not, you know, whatever. It's probably th those projects are now where we worked on the reference process and the assessment for about six months. This is the coming, the current six months, perhaps till the end of, of 2020. And towards the end of 2020, we're going to start working on these additional areas, some of which are already starting. And again, depending on the people who contribute, um, we want to be able to to do some analysis of developers' mailing lists to generate requirements from the mailing list. And with appropriate tagging, this is feasible. And we need to work on some kind of proof of concept and start um, expanding this work. And the, the goal, obviously, is once we have requirements, we can generate requirements-based test templates. And this will come a long way of establishing the quality of um, the Linux kernel without forcing kernel developers um, to, I don't know what I like to call, to wear a suit and a tie when it doesn't match their lifestyle. And we can, because the mailing lists do have all this information in one way or another, to have some um, established way um, by using appropriate tags and, and uh, appropriate crawlers, um, data mining tools um, to put together to generate those requirements, document them, and to generate from that test templates based on those requirements. And similarly, to, to generate the architecture documentation, which is needed as evidence of the, the quality of the kernel. I think this is probably even easier because the, the Linux kernel already has a, a very well-established um, software architecture. Okay, testing, there's a lot, a lot of ongoing work. This is not related only to safety. There's a great deal of interest in expanding this and um, different frameworks which exist. And lots of great ideas. And here I'm looking here, I just noticed my time is almost running up. This is the most fun part, the kind of stuff which, which I deal with mostly on a day-to-day -day basis. Defining different safety enhancements to the kernel source and getting the different contributors to upload those to the to to the kernel and to have them available as templates, as reference code, reference implementations with appropriate guidelines for use by all people who want to um, develop safety critical applications. Okay, so there's a lot of work here, and um, and again, I'll I'll send out one way or another. I'll send out my my um, contact information and people who are interested um, certainly will be great um, to
to see people joining, uh, signing up, joining, and contributing. Okay, the safety architecture work group, um, I talked about before, it, it deals with um, documenting the, the Linux, the, the, what we call the chunk, defining the safety requirements on those um, chunks, how we expect them to use, and, and, those, and, and those requirements are basically derived from the specific use cases which uh, the contributors bring with them. And afterwards, based on that, we define, we want, we are aiming to propose architectural changes to make Linux more robust, robust and more amenable for use in safety critical applications. Okay, and from this the architecture group, we formed the automotive work group. Okay, here we have a specific use case. I won't have time to go into it, but it's a very typical automotive use case where we have telltales. Telltales tell tell are basically some kind of indication of malfunction, for example, in a car. Okay, and the problem with it is we're trusting the, the graphics rendering to display something, which is really, I mean, if, if somebody's brakes are gone and, and the graphics um, display fails to... To indicate that we have a real problem here, because the the software underlying software and the, and the hardware can be great and detect the problem that's with the the brakes, but if the display somehow messes things up and doesn't actually give that indication to the driver, we have a really serious um, risk for that driver. So telltale display is an important safety critical element, and that's why it was used as a use case. It's, it's a pretty simple use case, but it, it has very complex implications. And the solution is proposed is to have a display and a, a, a backup monitor, which basically keeps tabs of what's happening if the display succeeded, and it has a watchdog running in the background to make sure that that display is updated with the critical information um, in, in, within the time um, limit which is necessary so that the driver can react. Okay, so this is a type of a architecture use case which is being analyzed and the different elements that are involved here for Linux are being analyzed to see where we can introduce enhancements so that the, the entire um, flow can be accepted um, based on Linux features the watchdog, whatever it may be, the graphics rendering, and accepted um, for use in safety critical applications. Okay, and the final work group are the medical devices. Okay, this I spoke about before. There's one area which I didn't mention, and that's the, the safety analysis based on STPA. I won't go into that. That's the whole, I'm not that familiar with it. I'm not, I'm not involved in this work group. But it's it's an interesting theoretical application of a a way of analyzing the system and um, based on the STPA and um, defining modeling the the safety of the system. Um, it's also being used now for of open source um, evaluation of open source ventilators and helping speed up the process of approval for those ventilators which are in critical need all over the world now, okay? And the, the first um, model which they are working on, you can see it is pretty streamlined. Um, um, see what it looks like. It's a pretty basic type of model of a, of a ventilator um, produced by a team in France. The, the source code is available, the documentation, everything is open source. They've, they've been using STPA to analyze it and to help to speed up the the approval process, but um, the fact that there are people who are well-versed in Linux who are involved um, is also helpful to bridge that gap and to, to accept um, um, the, the different um, components that are involved here and to, to smooth the, the analysis process. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm not going to really have time. I I, um, I think my time is, is up in a few minutes, so I'll, I'll just very quickly say we have very, very um, high hopes 
um, to provide tangible deliverables. And there are things, specific things which are we are working on right now. As I mentioned before, I, a little bit I, where I went into details. And um, obviously, we do want more contributors, people who 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 believe in this, who believe in 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 the power which Linux can bring to self safety critical applications, who want to contribute, especially on the technical side. Um, we're all for it. I think there's a strong market need and um, different business entities who do want to take advantage and who can contribute their small share, but that if we have a community, we all together can make the assessment process and the acceptance of such um, applications so much easier, and that's what we're aiming for. Okay, um, we have here a couple of slides, which I won't have time to go into. You can go look at them afterwards on your own time about different focuses, anyone who can contribute it in any of these specific areas. Um, and these are the, the um, uh, members, okay? I, I work for a company which is part of Intel, and but we have representatives from all, all kinds of both automotive manufacturers. As I said before, that's currently uh, a major focus because that's where our members are coming from. But if there are people who can come to, um, from other areas as well, we're all open for that. And um, we need that kind of synergy to, to move ahead. Okay, and the slides have uh, links um, to the different allies of materials. And I will add my um, contact information on the last slide here. And um, I guess Nelia, I'll, I'll send to whoever from the Linux Foundation or whoever it will be who can update the slides. I'll send uh, a, a slightly updated version of these slides, also with correcting some typos and the contact information for all. Okay. Um, questions? Let me see if there's anything. Ah, they don't advertise speed unless they do it themselves. So, okay, so I will add that to the slides. That's fine. And um, um, there was a question here about um, common criteria certification and tips 140 to um, to date. We haven't worked with those standards. I'm not so familiar with them because I come from the automotive domain and what we've been doing. But again, the the standards which feed our process are based on the use cases. So that if we are coming from the automotive domain, we're driven by ISO 26262. And if we're coming from other domains, then that's what will drive the assessment process. And as I said before, we have a, a, a more generic reference process with which we work. And because there are certain basics for um, safe software, which are common to all standards. And then it, we have the second stage of taking that reference process and mapping it onto the details of any specific um, safety standard. Okay, so if people are interested in getting involved in new areas and new use cases, that's more than welcome. I think there's a lot of the foundation will be in common, but obviously we do need that specific work to translate it into the specific use cases for each specific domain. Okay, so I hope I answered um, that question. Um, one more question was about sanitizers on the target. I don't have too much time to answer that, but if I um, understand um, that's dealing with um, your referring to static analysis, I think. Um, and here, if you want to follow up afterwards, you can contact me. I can tell you more about how the work is ongoing, um, what we have done, what we will be doing, but um, there's a lot of interesting work to um, there, okay? Um, so I think, I guess we're done. And Nelia, yeah, yeah, you can share my contact information, okay. Thanks. And I'll share it as well. Thank you.